It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for Ten. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for Ten. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's schools where we test science IQs. All of the young people who are gonna play our game today score high as you're about to see. This is a special game. The two teams you're about to meet have won once already. Today's winner goes on to become the second of our four semifinalists in this year's middle school competition. Let's meet them right now. Let's go first to Greenbelt Middle School. And say hello to Joseph. Joseph, nice to have you here today. And Livia is back. She has been here a number of times. She has a wonderful knowledge of science. And Joseph's brother, Timothy, is on the team, too. Tim, nice to have you with us, a sixth grader here. They'll be playing against Samuel Ogle from out in Bowie. Hey, Brad. Brad has grown up on this show from elementary school here as a middle school. He's just a great guy. Daniel here for the first time. Daniel, nice to have you on the show. And at the other end, Benjamin, terrific player over there. Ben, nice to have you here today as well. If you're not familiar with our game, we have six categories of questions, and here they are. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on Science Bowl, our game board goes from five points to 25. Easier questions on the left, tougher ones to the right. Toughest of them all is 25 points. All of our teams start out with 50 points. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. And the two rounds, as I was saying at the top of the show, we will have our second semi-finalist in this year's competition. Two grade schools, let's go over and make sure everything works properly before we start. Livia, would you try the red team's buzzer? Bingo, it works perfectly. And Brad, how about the green teams? Let's turn out the red one first and then we'll be able to check it out for good. Okay, Brad, go ahead. Nicely done, all right. Are we ready to play this game? Are you excited? Yes, I can tell. All right, I know you're determined to win as well. You've already won in the public's view because you are all the work you've done so far to get to this point in our competition. We go alphabetically G before S, so Greenbelt and Livia, let's play the bowl. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points to start out. Because of the rotation of the Earth on its axis, forces known as Coriolis forces deflect weather systems to the left in the northern hemisphere, to the right in the southern hemisphere, which explains why these strong storms, green belt, Hurricanes? Hurricanes never cross the equator. Absolutely right. You anticipated exactly where I was going. Good. Red, go. Uh, body for 20. Body for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Some microplastic pieces are smaller than 10 micrometers, which is about the size of one of your body's RBCs, which is an initialism for what? what is RBCs. RBCs. What you got, Brad? Uh, ribosome? No, nope, no. Nope. The initialism RBC. These microplastic pieces smaller than 10 micrometers, which is about the size of your body's RBCs. What are they? Um, red blood cells? That's what they are. They are the red blood cells. Absolutely right. Good comeback. I didn't know if anyone was going to pull that one out of the hat. Nice work, Libya. Go. Green for 20. Green for 20? Here it is, green for 20. Charles Darwin did experiments with plants to try to understand how phototropism works, a behavior that causes plants to do what? Green belt. Uh, lean towards the direction of the sun. Absolutely, or, or toward a light, absolutely right. Good, thank you, Joe, for your help. Go. Uh, zoo parade for 15. Zoo parade for 15 points, here's your question. Uh, penguins 
need to fear leopard seals and sharks in the waters around Antarctica. But they'd never have to worry about these earth signs. Green belt. What? Polar bears? Polar bears, absolutely right. Timothy knew I was going for a comparison there because polar bears are not found in the Antarctic, only in the Arctic. They are earth signs. Well done. Thank you, Tim. All right, go again, Red. Potpourri for 20? Potpourri, 20 points. Question is as follows. It's been discovered that some species of jellyfish are immortal. They never die. They can reverse aging by reverting back to this L initial stage in their development time and time again. Come on, guys, you need some points. Let's go. L initial stage. What you been for? Larvae? Larvae is right. Yes, indeed. Good. OK, green. Go, Brad. Dateline Science 25. Dateline 25 points. In December of 2022, AI introduced ChatGPT. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained What? A t yes, Samuel Ogle. Hmm? What do you mean for? Hmm? Gentlemen? Technology? Not technology, good try. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained What? A term that means components that transfer electrical energy from one electrical circuit to another. Transfer? Not transfer, very close. Transformer. Transformer is what we're looking for. Good try. That was a tough question. No points. The advantage still with the green team. Go. Uh, physical 25. Physical for 25 points. Big one in that category is a visual. Look at the monitor in the studio, if you would, please. If you go to Nevada, you will see Hoover Dam. Dams like the Hoover Dam use the power of held back water to spin turbines to produce electricity. What H initial prefix? Hydro. Green belt. Hydro. It is, say it again. Hydro. Hydro, that's right, it is hydroelectric power. Hydroelectricity, good, go, red. Zooparade for 20. Zooparade, 20 points. There is fossil evidence from South Korea that ancient crocodiles were once bipedal. Meaning they did what? What did they do? Olivia? They walked on two legs. Oh, can you imagine that? A crocodile walk on, woo! Just scary enough on four. Okay, exactly right. They walked on two, bipedal, two feet. Good, go. Green things for 25? Green things for 25 points. Uh, this is a, green things for 25? Yes, this is a multiple choice question. While some cucumbers are green things, the sea cucumber is actually an invertebrate related to starfish. To defend themselves against predators, sea cucumbers eviscerate, meaning they shoot out ink like an octopus, they shoot out a cloud of poison, or they shoot out their own liquefied internal organs. Green the belt. Last one? The last one, right? um, they shoot out their own organs? They do. They deserve their own because evis viscera refers to the visceral area here and your organ. Again, you listened to the cl those clues and you came up with the right answer. All right, the buzzer says we've come to the end of first round. It's been mostly green belt so far, 190. Samuel Ogle at 70, but we are early in the game. Don't you go anywhere. We'll have more science ball in just a moment. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Six outstanding young people here today, the pride of their schools and indeed of Prince George's County. It is just a joy to be able to showcase this kind of knowledge on our Science Bowl program, now in its 38th year for elementary and middle school students. Let's find out about these teams if you've not had the pleasure of meeting them earlier when they were here on our show. Let's go to Greenbelt Middle School, and boy, you guys are racking up the points of there. Livia, tell us how you're doing it. How did you prepare for this? Um, we watched a lot of old games and we had like after school training. And you also have uh, some great coaches, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, coaches that have been involved in science ball for many years. Who are those coaches? Um, our coaches are Dr. Pippet and Ms. Pagunson. Wonderful. And uh, Mr. Clement is here, is also here. She, he is there pr uh, supporting you, the principal of your school. And uh, you have a couple of alternates. Joe was an alternate. Who are the alternates now? Um, our alternates now are Nusaiba and Xiaoting. 
That's wonderful. And, you know, uh, Greenbelt, we were making a lot of fuss over the brand new middle schools this year, five new middle schools. But Greenbelt is also relatively new, and I'm sure you guys are proud of that school. Tell us a little bit about Livia. What do you want to do someday? Um, I was hoping for something in the field of psychology or music. Very good. Psychology, yeah. Uh, we're always trying to figure out what makes us tick and everybody else tick. We're, we are an unusual species, to say the least. You're playing such a great game here today. Timothy, nice to have you here. You were a fifth grader last year. Now you're a sixth grader. You, just, uh, you are just a talent. You're a precocious, precocious guy. How do you know so much science? Um, mostly just reading a lot of books and I listening whenever, I, <laughs> whenever I'm there's any opportunity to learn science? Hey, your, your, your brother's going to get even with you unless you give him some credit here. His brother right over here, Joseph, hey, Joseph. is there. Joseph, nice to have you on the show. Uh, tell us about yourself. What do you do in your spare time if you're not fussing with Tim? I do a lot of reading, way too many video games, eating and <laughs> eating. <laughs> eating, one of life's great pleasures there. All right, so you and Joe, you and Tim are brothers. Tell me about your family. You are all Science Bowl folks, right? Tell us about them. Um, yeah, we've enjoyed doing the Science Bowl when we've had it available. Um, Did you have another kind of, brother who was on the show? Yeah, we have one older brother who... What was his I think name? He, Hiram. Hiram. So I, we've got Hiram, uh, Timothy, Joseph, and you told me there's a fourth brother yet? Yeah. And where, how old is he? Five. Five. Nine, six. six. Recently six. So there's one in the pipeline, right? All right, so well, what a great family. Thanks for being here today and uh, uh, continuing the family tradition. Samuel Ogle, nice to have you guys here. I was saying earlier to Brad, and maybe you heard me too, he's grown up on this program. You were in, what elementary school did you play for? Uh, I played for Whitehall. Whitehall, and they've won championships. That's a great team. So now here you are in middle school and you're in eighth grade. This is your last year of competition. It has been our pleasure to have you all this time. And you're not done yet. You know, you're aiming for a county championship. Samuel Ogle won a county championship when it was an elementary school, but never when it's been a middle school. So you guys could some, make some history here. Brad, who's your principal? Uh, our principal is Mr. Millspa. Uh, yes. Overall, he's a wonderful principal because he supports the, the staff, the, the staff and the students. And you know, it all starts with the top, doesn't it? If you've got a great principal, a great boss, it just filters down to everybody here. And who were the alternates on your team? Uh, our alternates are Sophie and Camille. Yeah, and Daniel, you were an alternate. They brought you up here. I'm glad you got a chance to play this game here today. Something about Samuel Ogle that uh, you think people should know about? Um, Samuel, Ogle is one of, Samuel Ogle is one of the best schools in the county. It's very diverse. We have numerous uh, extracurricular activities like sports, soccer, basketball, science bowl, and there's different clubs like gaming club, printmaking club. Yeah, overall, it's just a really fun school. It sounds like it. Thanks for the plug for Science Bowl. And I like your pride in your school. It's the best school in the county. And I'm sure Livia and the Greenbelt folks would say their school is the best. And that's what you need. You've got to believe that where you are is the best. And you're making it the best. Uh, nice to have you back on the show. Brad, what do you want to do someday? When I grow up, I want to be a computer engineer. Wonderful. You'll be great at it, just as you're great at this. Daniel, nice to have you on the set. Tell us the Daniel story. What do you do in your spare time? Probably games. I'm eating. <laughs> so you and Joseph have something. What's your favorite food, Dan? Rice. Rice. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can um, clean up rice and put lots of spices, or you can just eat it plain, yeah. Uh, would you like to be a chef someday? No. No, you just want to be there to eat with the chef cooks, right? <laughs> Why would you want to be on the show? Because uh, I really like science, actually. I find it extremely interesting. Uh, science is my favorite subject. Yeah. And you know, if you understand science, the world isn't quite as scary because you understand why things happen as they do, like with your body or with the environment. Nice to have you here. Benjamin, nice to have you with us today. Uh, tell us a little bit about Ben. What do you do in your spare time? In my spare time, I enjoy reading, writing, <coughs> and tell drawing me what, sometimes. Not to interrupt you, what kind of books do you like, Benjamin? Oh, uh, usually I enjoy either graphic novels or historical books that retell events that have happened. Wow, you know, students who read are the ones who do best on this program because they're always going somewhere else, they're getting new knowledge, so reading is, reading is something like homework. You think, oh, maybe you could do it all your life because it just makes life that much richer. What do you want to do someday, Benjamin? When 
I, when I hopefully graduate from medical school, I plan on becoming an anesthesiologist. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I like that. We were talking about that before. That is a critical part of any surgical team, anesthesiology. You are responsible for keeping that patient alive. And I like your discipline. I like your intelligence. I think you'd be good at it. All right, let's get back to the game. 190 green belt, 70 Samuel. Come on, Ogle. Let's put it into high gear here in the second half. Livia, start us out. Lots of points to give away. Zoo parade for 25. Zoo parade for 25 points. Question is as follows. If you've ever had a turtle as a pet, anybody ever have a turtle as a pet? If you do, you'll know that it can swim at the bottom of the tank, in the middle of the tank, or on the surface. They do that by controlling how much air is in their lungs, which makes them more or less of this green belt. Buoyant? That's right. It makes them more or less buoyant depending on how much air they have inside them. Nicely done. You're always anticipating where I'm going. That's why you're doing so well. Go. Um, potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25 points. Two-part answer. All right. Come on, Brad, Benjamin, Daniel. Let's get this one. When sunlight passes into and around raindrops to form a rainbow, what two are initial actions? Reflection Green belt. Reflection and refraction? You got them both, reflection and refraction. That is what the light does. That is what's responsible for making that rainbow so brilliant. Good, go again, Red. Let's get physical for 20. Physical for 20 points. A new and disturbing twist on Stephen Hawking's black hole theory is that eventually everything that has mass in the universe will do this. The op. I think. Guys, what do you want to tell me? Everything in the universe will simply do this. What do you think? Dissipate. Say it again? Dissipate. Not quite. No, the judges were thinking about that. Let me finish it for Greenbelt. New and disturbing twist on Stephen Hawking's black hole theory is that eventually everything that has mass in the universe will simply do this. The opposite of condense. Evaporate? Evaporate, yeah, you came close to us. Very close to it. Nice try, Brad. Go, green belt. Body systems for 25? Body systems, 25 points, big one in that category. Multiple choice question. If an airplane is suddenly depressurized, this is critical, there's an immediate, immediate danger the passenger will suffer from which of the following? Hypoxia, hyponatremia, or hypoglycemia? Samuel Ogle, which of the three? Uh, hypoxia. Yes, sir. Yeah, the lack of oxygen, hypoxia. You need oxygen right away. Don't worry about the temperature so much. Good. Come on, you're on a roll. Go. Dateline 20. Dateline 20 points. It is still just science fiction, but future space travelers could stay asleep for long periods of time in a hibernation like. Oh, uh, what you got? It's like a cryogenic. Ooh, so we'd like to give that to you. Not quite, not quite. Future space travelers could stay asleep for long periods of time in a hibernation-like state known as Greenbelt. Suspended what? Anima animation. Animation. That's where we were headed. Suspended animation. Nice try. I like that cryogenics business. Good. Red, go. Dateline for 15. Dateline for 15 points. President Biden and Congress passed a law to increase production of these silicon-based C initial components. Chips. Um, chips? Computer chips? Chips, absolutely, yes. Found in all of our electronic devices. And most of them are made overseas in Taiwan. We're trying to increase domestic production over here. All right. Go again. Livia. Green things for 15? Green things, 15 points. Your question. The pine cone seeds of the bristle cone pine tree will only open during the heat of a forest fire. These seeds then land in the ashes of the forest fire and do this, the first step in regrowing the forest. Germinate? Germinate? They germinate. They would not germinate unless there were a forest fire. Nature has a plan. Forest fires are not disasters. It is a way of renewal. Go red. Body systems for 15? Body for 15 points. Team's question as follows. Since these openings in your skin contain hair follicles and sweat glands. It's important to keep them clear. Come on, Samuel Ogle, what pores, are they? Pores, pores. yeah, all right, thanks, Benjamin. Go red. Uh, Popery 15. Popery 15 points, question. 
There was the fear that the sargassum seaweed that was washing up onto America's beaches last summer might carry the bacterium known for causing necrotizing fasciitis, which is a bacterium that literally eats your what? Samuel Ogle. Flesh. Flesh, the flesh-eating bacteria. You got that right. You, you picked up right on where I was headed. Good. Go, Brad. Green 10. Green 10. Green 10. Question. Seagrasses, just like plants that live on land, have leaves and roots and flowers and seeds. Most importantly, seagrasses provide oxygen to sea creatures by performing this process. Photosynthesis. Green belt. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. What's science ball without a photosynthesis question? Go red. Uh, body for 10. Body for 10. Question. Multiple choice. If there is a defibrillator in your school, and I hope there is, or you see one in another public building, would you use it to help someone who couldn't? Someone who can't breathe? Not who can't breathe, no. That was one of the choices. A defibrillator, Samuel Ogle, would be used to help someone who can't breathe, is bleeding profusely, or suffering a heart attack. You think heart attack? Uh, is it a heart attack? It is, yes, that shock. Gets that heart beating again. Nicely, come, good comeback. Go green. Physical 10. Physical 10. This word that describes the afterglow of the rising sun and the setting, setting sun was also the title of romance movies with name like, names like Breaking Dawn and New Moon. I think. Samuel Ogle. Sunrise. Twilight? Twilight it is, yes indeed. I knew it was in there somewhere. I like your smiles, guys. Good, go bread. Uh, Popery 10. Popery, 10 points. Werner von Braun, who helped put America's men on the moon, was one of these kinds of scientists. Astronomer? Green belt. Uh, astronomer? Uh, Astrophysicist? No, we can't no. give that to you. Samuel Ogle. Werner von Braun, who helped put America's men on the moon, was one of these kinds of science, a term often used to mean someone who is really super smart. Genius. Genius. A rocket scientist. A rocket scientist. Go again, please. Who, whose question is it? Great. Brett. Uh, parade 10. Uh, did you say parade? Parade. Uh, parade. Green 10. Green 10. Uh, no, no, no Zoo 10. Zoo 10. All right. Here we go. Um, because its blood is filled with a pigment known as biliverdin, B I L I V E R D I N, a lizard in New Guinea has blood that's not red or blue. Green belt. Green? It's green. Absolutely right. V E R D is a clue always for green. Go. Dateline for 10. Dateline for 10 points. Some criminals in Australia recently killed, skinned, and ate two of the country's largest crocodiles to prove that humans and not crocodiles are these A initial top predators. Apex predators? A apex is right. Good go. Uh, physical for five? Physical for five points. A substance that tests high on the pH scale is one of these, the opposite of an acid. Alkaline or base? Alkaline or base, absolutely right. All right, we have a couple of five pointers left. You choose, Lydia. Zoo parade for five? Zoo, zoo parade for five points. The new recommendation for mothers to hold their infants against their bare chest with a blanket over the baby for the first month of life is named for this Australian marsupial that famously does this. Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Kangaroo is right, yes, good, go. Body systems five. Body five. While invertebrates, like insects and crabs, have an exoskeleton, we humans and other vertebrates... Endoskeleton? An endoskeleton is correct. Oh, the buzzer has gone. We won't get to those last couple five-point questions, but uh, we have our second semi-finalist. We'll tell you more about that in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back. You knew, we knew this was going to be a high-scoring game, and it was because we've seen these young people before compete on the Science Bowl, and they are just whizzes, and I know you agree with that. Our final tally today is Samuel Ogle, 150, Greenbelt, 350 points. What a virtuoso performance. Let's give them a nice round of applause. They are headed 
to the semifinals, competing against Akakik, and then we, we will be determining two more middle schools in the subsequent weeks. And Livia, would you tell us all those wonderful people behind you? Um, this is our principal, Mr. Clement, one of our coaches, Mr. Pagunson, our two alternates, Yoting and Nusaiba, and our other coach, Dr. Pitpit. And we thank the Joseph and Timothy family for today and for the future and for the past, all the support your family has given to us. And another round of applause for that Samuel Ogle team. My goodness. And Brad, our thanks to you and uh, for being with us for all these years. You're just a, you are a poster child for Science Bowl, the way you play the game and the way you talk and your humility and the way you thank everybody. I think you're just terrific. Benjamin and Daniel as well. Thank you for being here. Brad, tell us who's back there. Uh, we have Camille, which is our alternate. Sophie, which is also another alternate. And Miss Pumphrey. One and only Miss Pumphrey back there. Thank you all for being here today. And thank you. Hope to see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Until then, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye.